लिए Pero si está el botón y a quien quiera tener un botón es estar. <risa> ok. Hi, my name is David Cage. I'm the writer and director of Indigo Prophecy. I just thought there's a few things you should know before you get started. I'd like you to meet my friend Bob. You'll be controlling him while you're learning. Let's begin with something simple. Move toward the mark on the floor. Perfect. Now you know how to move about. You're also going to have to be able to observe your environment. To do so, you'll have direct control of the cameras. Come on, give it a try. You can also look around you and see exactly what you want to see. But you won't be just looking around you in Indigo Prophecy. You also have to interact with your environment. Go to the door. Do you see the symbol at the top of the screen? It indicates the movement you have to make to execute the action. Do it slowly to really feel you're controlling your character's hand. Go ahead. That's cool. Now that you know how to move about, use the cameras and interact with the environment, we can move on to more serious stuff. Indigo Prophecy has action sequences where your character's life will be in danger. I'd better explain this to you before you find yourself on your own. When this symbol appears at the top of the screen, it means your character is gonna have to make a physical effort. You'll see, you'll be exhausted too. You have to press each side alternately and regularly if you want to succeed. Oh, looks like you need more training. Try again. You have to press each side alternately and regularly if you want to succeed. Oh, looks like you need more Push. training. Try again. Okay, okay.
Hey, not bad. Now for something a bit more difficult. Comenzamos you're gonna find rápido. yourself facing all kinds of dangers. In Inigo Prophecy, you're gonna need a cool head and good reflexes if you want to survive. Let's see how it works. That's what can happen if you don't have good reflexes. Yeah, Okay, I see you've got the hang of it. Now we can move on to something else. You can also choose what you want to say in dialogues in Indigo Prophecy. Let's give it a try. Um, what do you think of my friend Bob? Hey Bob, did you hear that? Right, I see you've got the hang of the dialogues. In Inigo Prophecy, you'll only have a limited amount of time to make up your mind. So you'd better think fast. Now, let's talk about your mental health. In Inigo Prophecy, your actions modify the psychological state of your character. Each time it changes, the symbol will appear on screen. Take care of your character, otherwise you may fall into depression, madness, or even commit suicide. Oh, I nearly forgot something important. In Inigo Prophecy, you'll be able to control all the main characters. Be careful. Your every action will have consequences for the story. A word of advice, think before you act. That's it. I've told you everything I know, or nearly everything. There are still lots of things to discover, but I'll leave you the surprise of finding them for yourself. Now it's up to you to play. And be careful, you're entering a world where anything can happen. Things are never quite what they seem. We think we understand the world around us, but we really only see the outside, what it seems to be. I used to be just like you. I believed in humanity, the newspapers, soap commercials, politics, and history. Oye, yo tengo tan mala suerte en los juegos que quien sabe tal vez si se te reúne necesidad. And you don't have any choice but to see things the way they really are. My name is Lucas Kane. My story is the one where an ordinary guy has something extraordinary happened to him. Maybe it was supposed to happen. Maybe it was my destiny or my karma or whatever. I know one thing for sure. Nothing's ever going to be the same again. It all started right here. Where else could it happen? New York, capital of the universe. The chessboard destiny chose for the last big game. I was just another pawn living my pawn's life. Until that night, when my life descended into chaos.
What? What, what have I done? I, I didn't want... It was like a dream. Ella dejó el cuervo. Nos vino a cometer su posesión. Es un cuervo diabólico. Quick, I, I've, I've got to get out of here before somebody comes in here. O sea, ahora, ahora dirá, ¿qué dirá? Oh, acabo de ser, este, un cuervo me dijo que me, que matara al señor. It's barred up. I can't get out this way. Got to get rid of it. No quiere limpiar la sangre de... Ah, es que es una escoba. Se queda un trapeador. Ok. Ya, no le va a hacer nada aquí. Vamos. 
Doc's diner. That's it. Why do they always wait for me to go on duty before they start killing each other in the middle of the night? Tyler, somebody gets murdered every day in New York. But especially when I'm on night duty. It's as if every psycho in the city has it in for me. If you want a bitch, do it inside. That way I don't have to freeze to death listening to it. <laughs> You're the boss, Carla. In five years on the force, I've seen some murders. But you never really get used to death. You just learn to live with it, that's all. I still don't know if it was fatigue, or cold, or something else. But I clearly remember the bad feeling I got when I walked into that restaurant. As if some part of me already knew that this time, something was different. How's it going, McCarthy? Evening, Inspector. I've been waiting for you. Hey, Tyler. Hey, Martin. So, what happened? Homicide. I found the body in the toilets. I had to go before I went home. Who is the victim? His name was, uh, John Winston. A regular here at the restaurant. Kate knew him. She could tell you more. Do we have a suspect? A client left just before I found the body. To top it all, he left without paying. Kate tried to talk to him, then he left. What were you doing here? Were you on duty? I wasn't. I just happened to be here when the murder happened. I like to come by here after work. Kate's coffee is the best in the East End. Is that the waitress over there? Yeah, Kate Morrison. I think that you should interrogate her. If you don't mind me saying, go easy on her, Inspector. She's still in a state of shock. Which table was the suspect sitting at? Oh, he was sitting at that table over there. Thanks for your help, Martin. It's late. I think you can go home and get some sleep. I'm gonna wait until you're finished with Kate, if you don't mind. I wanna make sure she gets home okay. Kate? I'm Inspector Carla Valenti. I'm in charge of the investigation here. Would you mind answering a few questions? No. Go ahead. Did you know the victim well? John was a regular. He came every Monday. He always ordered the same thing and I left a nice tip. Can you tell me anything about the customer who left just before they discovered the body? He was just a normal guy. I didn't really pay any attention to him. What was the man doing before the murder happened? He was there for a while. He was reading, I think. Could anyone else have come in? No, I don't think so. You can only get in the front door. If somebody else had come in, I would have seen them. Was John here alone? Did he speak with anyone? John always came alone. We chatted a bit. The weather, his job, the usual stuff. He never talked to anybody else. Do you know whether the victim had any enemies? Anybody that might want to kill him? John was just a nice, normal guy. I can't see why anybody would want to kill him. Did you hear anything while John was in the toilets? Sound of a struggle or yelling? No, I didn't notice anything. What happened before the murder? Did you notice anything unusual? No. It was just a night like any other. Can you tell me what you saw? There weren't that many people tonight. It's usually pretty calm during the week. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. I didn't even see John get up. Oh my god. Kate, try to pull yourself together. You are our main witness, so I'm really gonna need your help. My shift was almost over. I was just chatting with Martin at the bar. 
John got up and went to the restroom. The man must have followed him. When he came back out, I noticed that he hadn't paid his bill. I'm careful, because that happens a lot here, people forgetting to pay their bill. What happened next? The guy just ran off without paying. It wasn't until Martin found John's body that I realized... Did you happen to notice anything strange about John tonight? Did he seem worried or stressed out? No. He was just like he always is. He even made a joke when he came in. Do you think that you would recognize the suspect? I'll never forget that face. Perfect. Do you think that you could come down to the station tomorrow and help us construct a likeness of the killer? Yeah. I'll do whatever you think I can to help catch him. Thank you very much for your help, Kate. I hope you find the bastard who did it. People like that just don't deserve to live. I promise you, we'll do everything in our power to find him. Go home now and try to get some sleep. Martin will make sure you get home okay. You look hammered, Tyler. Yeah, this is my third night on call in a row. You know me, man. If I don't get my beauty sleep, it's zombie city. Eh, uh, you should be out of here pretty soon now. <laughs> you don't know Carla. She's capable of keeping everybody up till breakfast. And she is by far the most stubborn girl I ever met. thinking what I'm thinking? He wasn't killed in the stall. The killer dragged the body in to hide it. Do you know if anyone has contacted the family? Not as far as I knew. Oh, bizarre. What? Well, he still has his credit card and a hundred bucks in cash on him. I guess the killer wasn't after his money. I've been drinking to try and stay awake. Hey, I think there's some blood in the sink. Maybe the killer washed up before he left. Yeah, could be. Blood. This is where he killed him. It's 
several wounds on the left side of the chest and the area of the heart. They appear to be knife wounds. No trace of a struggle. Looks like the guy was taken totally by surprise. Why is there blood here? Did you find anything? Possibly. I don't understand why there would be blood here. Maybe it belongs to the victim. Not likely. Get Garrett to analyze it. Then we'll know for sure. You ever consider a career in plumbing, Carla? You ever consider a career in comedy, Tyler? Hey, everybody says I'm a very funny guy. Hey, Garrett. Hey, Frank. How's it going? Hey, Carla. Hey, Carla. So, you guys find anything? We took some samples here and there. We're almost finished. We were just waiting for you before we took the body away. Huh. Here's his fork. But where's the knife? Well, well, the coffee's not on the bill. A cup of coffee and a soft drink? That's weird. He's a caffeine addict, or else he wasn't alone. This is his. It's a pretty weird book for a killer to be reading. Garrett, there's a book under this table. Why don't you check it out for Prince? You got it, Carla. Did you find anything, Tyler? For that, I'd have to be able to keep my eyes open. 
Keep up the good work, Tyler. Carla, she's really something else. She's not always easy to get along with, but she's the best damn cop I know. Come on, let's go, Carla. I can't even keep my eyes open anymore. I want to take another look around. We haven't found the murder weapon. It might still be around here somewhere. Stab some dude in the toilets? You gotta be crazy. This guy took a big risk. Anybody could have walked in here and surprised him. Unless there's a gang running around hiding bloody knives and toilets, I think I might have found the murder weapon. Great. Tell Garrett, have him check for prints on the handle. Okay. Hey, Carla, I'm gonna take a look outside, see if I can find anything. This is the window from the toilets in the restaurant. Yo. What do you want? I was wondering, you didn't happen to see anything unusual tonight, did you? Ah, oh, leave me alone. I got nothing to say. I don't talk to cops. <laughs> right, thank you. You've been helpful. Hey, 
footprints. Maybe they belong to the killer. Huh, bloody piece of cloth. Maybe the lab guys could get something out of it. I'm gonna head back to the restaurant. Tyler, can you shut that thing off? We're on a murder site here. Hey, I just thought I'd chill the atmosphere a little. Okay, it's off. I better turn this off before Carla pops her vein. Tyler, I'm gonna take a look outside. Good evening, sir. Whoa! <laughs> hey, uh, babe. <laughs> what can I do for you? Cold enough for you? Yeah, well, luckily I got this to keep me warm. <laughs> you want a little splash? <laughs> My name is Carla Valenti. And you? What's your name? My name? <laughs> what the hell is my name? <laughs> Nobody uses it anymore. Guess I just forgot it. <laughs> yeah, oh, Bogart, yes. Uh, my friends call me Bogart. <laughs> Must be because I look so much like that actor fella. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna go try to get someplace warm. Take care of yourself. from the inside.
maybe it was a revenge thing. Or a psycho. This town is full of psychos. They're everywhere. When I was in the Bronx, I saw guys from the Bronx guts out and hand them to you just so they could take your shoes. Tyler, can you shut up for two minutes? Ya se pey, no sabe cuántas veces, es lo único que puedo hacer aquí. <risa> y la reja de acá abajo, pero... Creo que me falta algo para romperlo. Hola Sergi, bienvenido. Ay, no sé qué hacer aquí. Pero no encontré el arma. Decía que tenía que encontrar el arma también. Mira. You ready to go, Tyler? Ah, okay. I've everything I need to yeah, see. Are you sure? We can take another look around if you want. No, we're good. Let's head home. Okay, let's bust. Cool. Carla agrees to go. Let's get into the car before she changes her mind. Get ready and go to work. Oh, my head. It feels like somebody shoved a steel bar in my brain and then melted it. Gotta make it stop.
Suka. It's good to hear from you. I thought I'd call to find out if maybe you wanted to go to Mom and Dad's tomb together. And, to be honest, I thought it might be a good excuse to get back in touch with you. I need to see you, Marcus. I'm in big trouble. What are you talking about, Lucas? What happened? I can't really talk about it on the telephone. It's serious, Marcus. I'll meet you in half an hour at the park. See you there. Yesterday, at 7.30 p.m. Lucas, it's Tiffany. I thought maybe I'd pop over tomorrow night after I leave the hospital and pick up a few things. My wrists are still bloody. Gotta do something about that. Parents, Marcus and me, before the accident. That should help my migraine. Notice reads, don't take with alcohol. Thus spoke Zarathustra by Nietzsche. I've read it so many times, I know half of it by heart. Hey, you're listening to KWN 605, and it's now time for the Weather Flash with... New York police, please open the door. images in 
my head. I must be losing my mind. The sheets are full of blood. I can't go back to bed. I'm not tired anyway. This will hide the blood, in case anyone comes in the room. I'll change the sheets later. Massacre in East End Restaurant. An especially horrible murder was committed last night in the restroom of the... Police, please open the door. Police, they know. They, they've come to arrest me. Police, open up. Just a minute, I'm coming. I can't let them find any evidence linking me to last night. I've got a couple seconds to hide everything before I get the door. Ah, se va a pagar contra. Esperen. This is the New York police. I must insist that you open this door immediately. Just a second. I'm looking for the keys. If you do not open the door right now, I will be forced to knock it down. Y esto es ese, que otro lado. ¿Y dónde son las llaves? This is your last warning. Open the door now, or I knock it down. Porque stop. <laughs> no sé qué. 
New York police, please open the door. The police, they know. They, they've come to arrest me. Police, open up. Just a minute, I'm coming. I can't let them find any evidence linking me to last night. I've got a couple seconds to hide everything before I get the door. Sir, this is the New York police. I must insist that you open this door immediately. Ay, es que se mueve bien raro el control. De repente corre mucho, de repente no corre. Oh, mi computadora se va a apagar. If you do not open the door right now, I will be forced to knock it down. Just a second, I'm looking for the keys. The neighbors called the cops because they heard shouts coming from the Vamos a intentar pasar esa parte porque les tengo que comer. New York Police, please open the door. The police, they know, they, they've come to arrest me. Police, open up. Just a minute, I'm coming. I can't have to find any evidence linking me to last night. Couple seconds to hide everything before I get the door. No. Sir, this is the New York police. 
I must insist that you open his door immediately. If you do not open the door right now, I will be forced to knock it down. I'm sorry to make you wait like that. I, I was in the shower. Are you Lucas Kane? Yes. Mr. Kane, the neighbors heard yelling from your apartment. Is there a problem? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was me. I cut myself on some broken glass, and I freaked out a little. Fortunately, it wasn't a really big deal. Would it be all right if I took a little look around your apartment? Whatever. Go ahead. What happened to your wrist, sir? I told you I had a stupid accident with some broken glass. Holy cow. When you cut yourself, you go all the way, don't you? Thank you for your cooperation. Uh, sorry to have bothered you, sir. You know how it is. With everything that's been going on, uh, we prefer to be careful. I understand. Long, Mr. Kane. No, no puedo comer y jugar porque voy a comer pescado. Este. Dice que está completo. Entonces puede que me como una espina y no me dé cuenta. Oye, es un loop. 